We're going head-to-head today. Who is the number one contender for the Chiefs in the AFC West? We already told you yesterday it's the Chargers. How does that matchup work out? We're going to dig into it today on Locked On Chiefs. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. Welcome back, friends and neighbors, even you Chargers fans. How you doing? This is Locked On Chiefs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day for free on every platform everywhere. Make sure you like, sub, and hit the bell on YouTube and get subbed on those audio platforms. We got to talk about who is going to give the Chiefs the hardest run towards that AFC West title today. We're going to get into it. I'm Ryan Tracy, the founder of Rogue Analytics and Performance Consulting over at RogueAPC.com, as well as NFL33.com. You can check out all the non-Chiefs-related stuff there. Hope you guys are ready. This is going to be a fun one. Yeah, it is going to be a fun one. I am excited to talk about the Chargers. The Chargers, as <laughs> Berman used to say, uh, although it was San Diego at the time. But I, I do think that this is the team that is the number one contender for Kansas City, at least in the AFC West. Yeah, I, I have to completely agree. It, it comes down to, as we talked about yesterday, it, it's all about quarterback play in the AFC West. Probably the best division in football in terms of one through four at their quarterback positions, but even more so, Chargers versus Chiefs comes down to who supports or distracts their quarterback the best. And I, I think Herbert is is on the precipice here of getting himself into the conversation with, I think he's ahead of Joe Burrow myself, but with Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. If he can have the season that they think they can have, I think this is going to be neck and neck. I, I expect them, quite frankly, to split the season one and one. It's all about who can limit the quarterbacks the best. It was a close call. And you mentioned it yesterday about the timing of the coach's decision is, is what led to what the Chiefs win there. So if they settle down and they don't have that kind of thing, they have, I think, a little bit more firepower and a little bit more help up front. This could be like a, a, a blow for blow knockout fight. I expect a knockout fight, and that's how I think that this is going to go. I think that that's just the reality of how this is going to play out this season. And I said it yesterday, and I really hate caveating everything with this, but it's it's the truth of it. If everything stays equal and everybody's healthy, I think Kansas City wins. But injuries are going to play a part in this in this matchup and how these teams go about it this season. So uh, it's whatever team stays healthiest, and that's probably who's going to win this game. Uh, or these games, the Chargers, like we said, like I said yesterday, it's questionable coaching that cost them last year. Um, Kansas City probably still wins the division, but it's a lot closer if San Diego, or, sorry, if Los Angeles doesn't blow their win in Los Angeles. You're absolutely right. I mean, and, and that comes down to how you're going to, to get those things done. Trust your players. Don't go for unnecessary risks. I think we're going to see a, a little bit more – I don't want to say conservative because I think he's going to be well past uh, the, the the aggressive side of the pendulum, but maybe not quite as aggressive as Staley was last season. But what does that mean for supporting the quarterback? That's really what it comes down to. And, and they made some additions. We'll talk about the offensive addition coming up here in a little bit. But a, as an organization, it feels like there's maybe more, more pressure more urgency on the part of the Chargers. You went and made the, the Khalil Mack trade. So for the front office, certainly, and I think for the coaching staff, you brought in Bryce Callahan. You obviously made your draft selections knowing that you're trying to fight against the Chiefs. In fact, the whole division made their draft plans according to trying to battle the Chiefs. Overall, how do you feel that they did this offseason in terms of, of trying to stack the deck more in their favor if they can't? I think they did okay. I think that it's, it's going to be very hard to get much better. It's all incremental at this point. I mean, I, I think they have a very good team, and that's what I mean when it gets to the point of incremental is, can you get better? Yes. Are you able to get better within the confines of the salary cap? Probably not. I think that their team is probably going to be really close to uh, the top of the salary cap when it comes to all the different players they've had and what they're able to do. And they've only got another couple of years in this Justin Herbert window. So they have to maximize it now and they have to try to take advantage of it. Yeah. And that's, that's how they have to get that done. And, and the two front offices, I think go about things very differently, but I think they've gotten some interesting things done. They they have changed a bit of their front on the defensive side. They've 
not really changed their weapons, but they've augmented a little bit. We'll talk matchups and things here in the next segment and two. But just overall, I, I think that because of the way that they're going, I, I like Joe Lombardi as the offensive coordinator. I, I think that's probably an upgrade um, in, in this season versus last. I think that he and Saley working together, I think, gives them a little bit more oomph on the offensive side. And so that, I feel, in turn, puts a little bit more pressure back on Spags. And now he's going to adjust to what he's had to deal with. And we all know that there's a pass rush gap out there. So how do they get creative? And if I remember correctly, they play the Chargers pretty early on in the season, do they not? Yeah, we too, I believe. So it's got to be – I just can't talk about it in training camp, but it's got to be right on the edge of training camp because it's coming really fast. And, and when you have that kind of formidable foe early in your season, you got to be prepared and you got to be thinking about it during those preseason games. Yeah, no, you absolutely have to. And I think that you have to be doing it during your training camp. I mean, you got to be putting in packages for that game specifically, probably in training camp, because you know what it's going to mean in this division. And playing so early in the season, you're going to absolutely have to have be on your best, be on your best football and have whatever package you're going to have to attack that team ready to go week two. Yeah. I I, I bet they're going to have a couple new wrinkles. We'll go over those here in a second. But if I was going to bet that. And just how many wrinkles are they going to stay in 11 personnel? I don't know, but I do it at betonline.net, your number one source for all of your sports info and betting information. They give you all that plus podcasts, all the stats, all the scores, everything that you need to make informed decisions. And that's the point, whether you're betting on uh, hockey, baseball, MMA, soccer, whatever's going to come after that, <laughs> that isn't football. There's a lot out there. If you need all that information to get your money on the line, in a way that makes you some money, go over to Bet Online. It's where the game starts. So when we look, and I, forgive me, but I want to talk defense first. I know you're shocked. <laughs> Imagine uh, that. <laughs> Wait, you don't want to talk about their fullback? No, hold on. Well, right. Well, maybe we'll do that too. Um, but Herbert, he's always had good weapons. They brought Mike Williams back on an enormous contract. I don't know if that was the greatest decision, the money that they gave him, but he's there. They still have Keenan out, and it looks like I they're like going to start. It appears from what I'm hearing that they're going to start Josh Palmer outside. They're going to leave Keenan Allen on the inside. I think that plays into the matchup with the Chiefs because for those who, that are a little bit uh, upset that Legendary Sneed didn't take a huge step forward last season, I think getting in that nickel and manning that all season, I think, was a stabilizing factor. Now he can up his game a little bit. He's going to have that confrontation. He is your best corner. So having him on Allen on purpose for the majority of the game, I know they'll make some changes. And they'll try to move him around a little bit. But that sets up what I think will be McDuffie on one side and either Fenton or Lonnie Johnson on the other in a way that I think is positive in terms of individual matchups in the past game versus what they saw last season in those matchups. Yeah, and I think it's going to be something to watch all season long. I, I'm really curious to see how those Chargers receivers adapt to their new roles. And Keenan Allen in the slot, I think, can be very good. So I think that could really play into his strengths. Uh, but he's one of their best wide receivers. So it's a question of, does he is that really his best role? Probably not. But I get why they're doing it because I think Palmer's probably more of an outside guy. Mike Williams is definitely more of an outside guy. So it makes sense to me to try to get your best three guys on the field. Keenan Allen is certainly capable to play in the slot. Yeah. And, you know, you can augment that a little bit. They have Gerald Everett as the tight end. Looks like he'll be a starter. They have Tom Parham out there still. Um, I don't – I haven't heard anything about anybody else really stepping up or making any kind of, like, wonderkin moves or anything like that. So, offensively, it looks like it is going to be more the, – the pass threat is going to come from the wide receivers rather than the tight end as well. But that doesn't alleviate the pressure on the linebackers for the Kansas City Chiefs because – they went and drafted Isaiah Spiller as well. So it's going to be a lot more of a one-two punch and not just Austin Eckler and whoever else you can run at. Him. I do think that if Staley wants to make those decisions, if he wants to be in positive situations to go forward on fourth, I think they might try to run the ball at him a little bit more. It's been successful over the last couple of years, and now you have a fresh rookie body that performs pretty well inside the tackles. So that, in turn tells me that not only your starters are going to be on the on the field, but so is your number three linebacker. Is that going to be Elijah Lee? Is that going to be Jermaine Carter? Is that going to be Leo Chanel? I don't know. But whoever it is, 
they're going to have their hands full. And I like the idea of it being Chanel because the way that he comes downhill, I think that that can thwart that possible chess move by the Chargers. Yeah, and I'm really curious to see what they're able to do, a linebacker against this Chargers team and, and slowing down the run because that is going to be a huge key for Kansas City, not just against the Chargers, but against other teams as well. Uh, when you have such a formidable passing game, which the Chargers are going to have, you have to be able to, to shut down the other side of it. And if you can shut down one and make them one-dimensional, then maybe you have a chance against that one dimension, even if it is very good. But if they're able to play in a situation where they can run the ball or throw the ball, Kansas City is going to be in a world of hurt, and it's going to be a 40-point game on each side of the ball, and you don't want that. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, you're okay with it because I think Kansas City still has the weapons to be able to do it, but it's not a good situation. So the other thing that helps is in order to deliver the ball, you got to have the protection for Herbert. And I think that's been up and down at times. We know that he's more athletic than he than he's really given credit for. But one interesting note, and I mentioned it yesterday because they're going to have a rookie playing Chris Jones, and that's going to be Zion Johnson, who I think was easily the best interior player inside uh, the tackle box for this last draft. That said, he's still a rookie. So I don't know that I feel like, boom, that's that's going to be a big thing. Now, if I'm reading this upside down, he's playing right guard, then let's take that off because maybe it is Matt Filer that's going to be playing Chris Jones. So I, I read the depth chart upside down. Um, but I will say, Chris is able to flip. And so you want to attack that rookie. So if it is Zion Johnson on the right guard, I can see them doing that and, and moving that shade so that Chris has a little bit of opportunity to rush inside against that. And there's also the other option. You could bring George Koloftis inside as well. Because we've seen, I saw him do that in college pretty effectively. And I think he's a guy that has a positive matchup against uh, Zion Johnson as well. Yeah, no, he does. And I think that that's something to watch. I, I do think that they could go that direction. And, and we've talked about it on the show multiple times of bringing Carl Optus inside and, and using that uh, and, and using that to your advantage to be able to do that. And if you do that and you bring him inside, you know, maybe you put a guy like Kando out there. We'll see what Kando has this year to get after the passer. Um, you know, he's got more speed and, and that's more of his natural type ability. Uh, maybe he's able to progress after having a injure, injury injury late in season last year uh if he could take a step forward that'd be huge for huge for kansas city yeah absolutely now if filer doesn't end up being the left uh guard that also puts you in another situation we have another rookie in there because jamar is going to be the back one sal going to be the the backup i like him i like him inside do i like him against chris jones probably not so one way or the other i do feel that chris jones is going to have a matchup and that's we'll know a little bit more after camp but i can i can see right now that being the primetime matchup for the Chiefs on the defensive side, and then obviously trying to corral uh, Keenan Allen, who, again, I, I still think is corralable. Let me just put it that way. So if they can do those two things, I think you can get it done. But that leaves the other side of the ball as well. How are they going to attack and how they can sustain the attack? We're going to talk about that next. So the defense for the Chargers has changed. Can, can I Maybe say something really quick? Yeah, I, I just want to throw out there. I don't disagree with you on Keenan Allen. I think he is corralable. I just mm -hmm. still, still think he is probably their best overall wide receiver. I just want yeah. to throw that out there because I do think that they can stop him. I'm not trying to say he is a Jamar Chase like wide receiver. He is good, but he is not fantastic. He is not great. Thank you, in my okay. opinion. That's that's all I wanted to say. Let's go ahead and talk about offense. <laughs> no, I'm I'm with you, and a lot of people like to tout it as though he's right up there. Um, the defense has changed a bit. Um, Obviously, the addition and being able to truly bookend Joey Bosa is probably the number one concern for Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs offense. Yep. Um, now, like you said, I think yesterday, I think you were subtle about it, but I think you were dead on. I don't think Cleo Max what he used to be. And quite frankly, he was never a guy that was going to explode off the line and, and, and beat you around the edge so bad that you thought he was Von Miller. Right. So it still is about hitting your pace for Patrick. It still is about being able, and I think honestly the departure of Tyreek Hill plays into that, being able to get the ball out quicker, not waiting on it so much. I think that helps. I think Bose is very, very explosive, but I don't think he's he's the speed demon that Von Miller was either. So it, it does give you that like two and a quarter, two and a half second delivery. I think that works just fine for Patrick. And if they take that as the tempo, deliver the ball and get it out, make your yards and come back for the next snap. I think that's the best way that they can kind of take those two edges out. Yeah. And it's going to be very curious to me to see what Mac has left. 
And I, I, I like how you said what I said yesterday because I think that's that's pretty much what I did. And I think that's really the way I meant it. I'm not saying he can't be – excuse me, I apologize. I'm not saying he can't be a good pass rusher. He could be. But he hasn't shown what he showed in, in when he was with the Raiders since he left – really since he really left the Raiders. I mean, I guess maybe his first year in Chicago. But it really hasn't been the same since. So if he is able to get you eight or nine sacks, I think you're feeling pretty good if you're Los Angeles – uh, but I don't know that that's going to be enough to slow Kansas City's offense down. Yeah. So that's going to be the key. And you're absolutely correct. He he never was a Von Miller, but he was fast enough to give Eric Fisher trouble when he was in Kansas City. Uh, cool. But I don't know that he's got that same speed and that same burst around the edge right now. So that's going to play into how Kansas City is going to be able to deal with this formidable duo is how are you going to deal with those two guys? And – you know, the bigger question to me, or, or really I think the way that they attack that is, why not just use a tight end and chip him half the time? Yeah. I, I mean, you know, you look at Bosa, and I like Brown on Bosa for the most part. Don't get me wrong. There's going to be times where Bosa beats him. That's just the reality of how it's going to happen. But I like that matchup for the most part, and I'm curious to see how Brown does with his lighter weight and his better feet. I think that he'll have this season – compared to last with the weight loss. So the question becomes, if you can chip a guy like Mac with a tight end or even a running back coming out of the backfield or even a wide receiver, that I mean, that's something we haven't talked about at all with the Chiefs offense. They now have size of wide receiver that they can get away with doing that sometimes. Yeah. I mean, you've got a guy in MBS, Juju can do that. Uh, they can go in and they can ship those guys. I mean, they don't have to be you know trying to block them but they can right. definitely chip them and get them to where they're not being able to get outside. And that's going to help guys like Brown. That's going to help guys like Kennard. That may lead to some, some late developing routes as well, because what the chargers did do in trying to combat the Kansas city chiefs offense is they did go out and they bolstered their secondary Bryce Callahan coming in uh, at the nickel. Sante Samuel is still there. You have uh, Derwin James and, and Nasir Adderley as your starters. I actually think JT Woods is going to play a lot for them, but you have JC Jackson on the other side. So now you have some, some significant matchups. For me, it's about who in the slot can take advantage of Bryce Callahan and what I think will eventually become uh, JT Woods playing down in there in that kind of like dual role. Because outside, I, I think I think JC Jackson is, is formidable. Um, I think certainly Sante Samuel is, is subject to size. So I think you're going to move guys around, whether it's Juju or MVS, but you want to try to attack um, Sante Samuel if he lines up outside with one of the bigger receivers, in my opinion. Yep, I agree with you. And that's going to be another key that we really haven't touched on, although we have touched on a little bit. How does Patrick Mahomes' game change this season? Because mm -hmm. if he's able or if he's willing, it's not even able, It's because we know he's able. He did it to Tyree Kill at times in the past where you just throw the ball up and let him go get it. If he's willing to give those wide receivers the opportunity to do those types of plays, guys like MVS and Juju are going to be very hard for corners like Samuel to cover and other guys that are going to be less in size and in stature. I mean, I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's going to be very hard to be in the right position if, if Mahomes is willing to give them the opportunity for a 50-50 ball. Well, and that leads me back to the X factor, not only of this game, but of the season, in my opinion. You, they can line up all those matchups on Hardman, MVS, Juju. The X factor is going to be Jody Fortson can line up at wide receiver or at that tight end and make that kind of chip block and a delayed release. Or That's he can take too. a linebacker out to the to the slot. If they can get that matchup, I think Jody Fortson can exploit linebackers is my whole point. They yep. do that, and I think they're in business. I think I think Gray can too. Uh, mm -hmm. Jody Fortson showed it last year. I think Gray has the ability to show it this year. I think his adjustment to the game, remember where he came from. I think he's going to be a lot better in year two than he was in year one. I hope so. I'm looking forward to that. Let us know what you think. What's the biggest matchup for this particular series in the AFC West? Are the Chargers still the team to beat? The let Chargers. us know what you think. The Chargers, yeah. I like that. Um, let us know <laughs> in, the, in the comments on YouTube or in the uh, reviews on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thank you for spending your time with us today. Matt Derrick's up tomorrow. We'll be back later in the week to look at the Broncos and the Raiders and just how these things are going to come together. Thanks for listening and, today. We'll talk to you then. And just a reminder, we will not have a show on the 4th of July. So just a heads up. Have Thank you for listening. Day. We will talk to you tomorrow. Matt and Ryan will be back tomorrow. So enjoy. Thanks.